You can go ahead and start. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first ever District 6450 Birthplace of Rotary Annual Meeting via Zoom. Um, I need a volunteer, please. I'm looking at Michael Flores. If you will unmute yourself, and the next slide should be the four-way test. Would you lead us in the four-way test, please? Absolutely. Of the things we think, say, or do, first, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to, fair all, to concerned? all concerned? Third, will it build no goodwill good. and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Very nicely done, Mike. Thank you very much. So again, good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to walk you through the next uh, few minutes of different um, I, um, items that we need to vote on. We're gonna be giving some awards this morning as well as passing out some lovely prizes. So with this, we're gonna just let Connor start certifying that we are ready to proceed. So good morning, Connor. Good morning, Debbie. We are certified to proceed with 36 clubs in attendance. Thank you so very much. And thank you everyone for um, filling our room. We have 117 participants in the mor this morning. Alrighty. So this morning, um, you will remember that a bit ago, we challenged everyone to do some things with masks. If we were going to have to wear them, we might as well look good doing so. And we had four weeks of competition and came up with four masks that were chosen as semi-finalist winners. And just to get us accustomed to this polling so that we feel comfortable with it, we are gonna ask you to vote uh, from those four on the very best mask. So we have mask number one is Joe Kenny from Downers Grove wearing a combination of masks that set his theme. Mask number two is Joseph Yen from Montgomery with his I believe that's a take on something from the Rolling Stones. We have Franklin from the Rotary Club of Naperville, um, and he created his own kind of toothless gold tooth mask. And then from the Rotary Club of um, uh, Chicago South, we have Aron Miller, who decided to go with one giant eyeball as a mask. So if, um, Shelby, do you want to explain how the all 119 participants will choose mask number one, two, three, or four to win the best mask in the district? Thanks, Debbie. So again, as Debbie stated, anyone on the call can participate in this online poll. I will pop it up on your screen and you can select either option one, two, three, or four, we'll give you a minute or two to make your selection. Congratulations to number two, Joe Yan. You are the favorite mask of the district. Everyone, round of applause for Joe Yan. And he will be, I don't know if you can see this, the recipient of the 14 karat gold fabric golden mask, first ever of its kind, along with a $100 um, uh, Amazon gift certificate. So congratulations, Joe Yen. Steven? All right, congratulations. Now, it is tradition that at, the, at, at a district conference on Sunday mornings, we always talk, took a moment to remember the Rotarians that we've lost this past year. And we wanted to do something this morning as well. So Kathy Rack, will you please um, 
take care, take that over for us, please. Thank you, Debbie. Every spring when we gather together, we take time to remember the Rotarians we have lost in the past year. And this year we remember from Brookfield Riverside, Emil Peluso, Cicero, Stanley Lula, Hinsdale, Earl Larson, Naperville, Clifford Crone, and Margaret Peg Price. Oak Brook, Tony Signorelli, Oswego, William Davis Jr., and our 2000-2001 RI past president, Frank Devlin. I will now light a candle and ring the bell in memory of all. We will re remember them at the rising of the sun, it's going down, the blowing of the wind in the chill of winter, at the beginning of the year and when it ends. As long as we live, they too will live. For the good they have done, the wisdom they imparted, the times they shared, for the giving of service above self, we will remember them. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Wonderfully done. All right, I think it's, um, we wanna get off to a really good start this morning by presenting some awards. You'll see the photograph on the left of the screen as you look at it. That was designed for us by Nani Lacetas and will be presented to all of the winners um, this morning. So we're gonna recognize five individuals first for outstanding service to the district. And they are Mara Johnson from the Rotary Club of Montgomery. Mara coordinated our programs to introduce new clubs to Rotary and has done an exceptional job for us. Thank you, Mara. Kathy Rack from the Rotary Club of LaGrange. Kathy schedules um, in addition to being the assistant governor coordinator, she does the scheduling for the district governor. And I cannot thank her enough for keeping me on track, on time, and in the right direction. Sherry Vanna, <clears throat> Sue DeBolt, and Christopher Olson coordinated our youth exchange program. And with the COVID environment, certainly worked harder and more diligently to keep our children and our young students safe and protected and secure in an environment unprecedented. So we salute them and recognize their contribution to the district and thank them for their service. So thank you. We have a, another group that we will do a little later, but to these five, thank you very much. Now, if you will all remember when we talked about the big bodacious celebration that was to be our district conference, we had promised lots and lots of prizes. So we did collect lots of lots of prizes and we intend to give them away this morning. So what we're gonna do is Melanie has, is gonna give me a series of numbers that represent a place in the registration for today. As your name is called, unmute yourself and choose from one of six items. Number one is, this one up here is a box, about five bottles of wine. You have number two is a basket from Cooper's Hawk. The number three is some trail mix um, and some pretzels. The fourth is a Bloody Mary combination mix. Number five is a huge collection of things from Mary Kay Cosmetics. And number six is kind of just an anxiety relief, zen kind of basket. So you will pick a basket and then um, Me uh, Melanie Jones will make sure that it gets to you. So Melanie, what are our lucky numbers this morning? First number is seven. And that's Walt Naki from Western Springs. Congratulations, Walt. It play paid to show up early. You may select from items one through six. You'll have to unmute yourself. There we go, hi. Hi Walt, congratulations. Which basket Thank would you, you like? Thank you, so wonderful. Uh, I'm gonna have all the wines. Okay, so you're gonna take number one. I am. 
All right, thank you, Walt. Congratulations. Okay, number next number, uh, Melanie. 21. Is Debbie Missetti from Woodridge? Debbie, which basket would you like to choose? Oh, I will go with number five. Okay, Debbie is gonna take the Mary Kay basket. Congratulations. By the way, Walt, your basket came through the generosity of the Rotary Club of LaGrange. And Mary, um, Debbie, yours is a combination gift from Wendy Gross and myself. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, LaGrange. <laughs> All right, next number. 33. Eric Semple from Sh uh, Rotary Howdy. One. Hello, which basket would you like? All right, so uh, which ones do we still have left here? Anything one was but taken. one and five are gone. All right, um, I will take number two, please, a Cooper's Hawk. Number two, that's a gift from my club, the Rotary Club of Orland Park. So congratulations, you, Eric. And Eric is going to be the next president of Rotary One. So congratulations, Eric. All right, next number, please. 39. Okay, number 39 is Jeanette Call. Jeanette from the Rotary Club of Montgomery. I would love number six. Okay, Jeanette is going to take number six, the anxiety relief basket donated by Linda Kemp from the Aurora Rotary Club. So congratulations, Jeanette. Okay, next number. 45. Number 45 is Mary Dankowski from Chicago Heights Park Forest. Woohoo! Number um, three and four are left. I will take, in honor of my name, I will take number four, Bloody Mary. <laughs> okay, number four. That is donated by Mary, also another Mary, Mary Doherty. So thank you, Mary's across thank the Thank you, Mary. Okay, last number for this round. 57. Okay, number 57 is Nancy Lazowski from Brookfield Riverside. Nancy, we're going to give you item number three. And that was donated by the Rotary Club of Chicago. Thank you. So thank you very much, everyone. There's going to be one more um, presentation of gift baskets. So it's keep on the edge of your seats. Thank you. Next. Okay, now, Connor, if you'll bring us up to date on how this morning is going to proceed, please. Yes. So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much um, for attending. For those of you um, I called out, um, you are the delegate representing your club. Um, we're going to do voting a variety of ways this morning, and so you'll understand and we'll kind of explain each one as we go. Um, some of the items are delegate only, and the delegate only votes will receive a link in the chat box. All you have to do is click on that link and it'll open it up to your page. Again, as Shelby mentioned at the uh, kind of onset of the call, if your name is not included, just click other and go ahead and input your name. We based that on the registration from late last night. So if you didn't, um, we didn't get your information by then, you will, um, you it won't be there. So just go ahead and put other and input your name. Um, for the items that everyone is able to vote on, um, that includes delegates and everyone who is here um, as a Rotarian, um, we will do that through the poll of a Zoom poll, very similar to how we did the face mask. The question will come up, um, you will vote accordingly, and then we will kind of read out um, um, what is appropriate. Any questions there? I'm also going to be monitoring the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free. You can ask it to anyone or you can ask it to me privately. Um, but with that, any questions as of this point? So far, no questions, Connor. So let's go to the minutes. Sounds good. Um, so as part of um, the packet, it was Exhibit B in the 2020 annual meeting um, documents. We had our 2019 annual meeting um, minutes that were um, submitted by David Phelps, Assistant Secretary. Um, so I'm trusting that everyone had a chance to review those. Um, and if so, I'd like to ask for a motion for approval. So move, Chuck Corgan. Thank you, Chuck. Is there a second? Second. Thank you so much, Debbie. 
All those in favor of approving the April 13th, 2019 annual board meeting minutes. Aye. 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 Everybody? Aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? Excellent. The minutes are approved. Thank you so much, District Governor Debbie. Thank you, Connor. Now we're going to move to some resolutions and elections. Now these will be the two options to vote will be delegates only. So please, unless you have been specifically identified as a delegate, do not vote. We will have folks ver verifying it, but it'll just make it a lot easier for us if you do not vote unless you were a delegate. Now they excuse, excuse the interruption, this is Karen. Hunter has raised his hand. All right, Hunter, unmute yourself. Hello, Hunter. No, 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 that, that was a thumbs up. Oh, sorry about <laughs> that. Again, this is new technology. We, we will learn the difference soon, I'm sure. So no worries, we'd rather err on the side of caution. All right, so Hunter, if, I'm sorry, Connor, if you'd like to move forward, Yep. We're going to look at some resolutions and an election. Thank you so much, Debbie. Um, so you'll see um, Are Onayami's name and bio on the screen in front of you. He is the proposed district governor for year 2022-2023. So the resolution in front of us this morning is to confirm the Board of Directors endorsement of the Governor's Nominating Committee selection of Are Onayami member of the Rotary Club of Oak Park River Forest as district governor for 2022-2023. So for this is a delegate only vote, as Debbie mentioned. Um, there is a link that has been chatted to you in the resolution. Please click on that link. Um, it was just sent by Ed Graziano. So again, if you are a delegate, please click on that link and go ahead and vote. Hey, um, thanks everyone so much for voting. Um, the resolution um, has passed and we have confirmed the Board of Directors endorsement. Um, so congrats to Ade, um, Rotary Club of Oak Park River Forest, who will become our district governor in 2022-2023. Ade, a personal thanks from me to you. It is a job I'm, I'm about ready to turn over to Chuck, but I would do it again in a heartbeat and I wish you the very best, congratulations. All right, so now, ladies and gentlemen, um, Connor, take us to the part two of this resolution and election, please. Um, of course, so you will see still on your um, screen in front of you, we will move to the election for the district representative to serve on the Rotary International Council on Legislation, who will serve from July 20th to June 2023. Um, you will basically see the candidates in front of you on the screen as well as in the poll. That is going to again send the chat to you. It is a delegate only vote. So please just click on the link. Again, same things apply if your name is there. If not, just click other. You are only allowed to vote for one candidate. So from the list, please just choose one candidate um, for who you believe should be our representative from the district to serve on the Rotary International Council on Legislation. Um, so again, those names are in front of you. Um, that is Osei, um, David Andrews Hutchinson, Ron Broida, Pedro Ceballos, um, Scott McAdam, Pat Merriweather, and Dave Templin. Um, again, as a delegate, please just vote for one of those candidates. The candidate receiving the greatest number of votes will be the district representative, and the candidate with the next highest votes will be the alternate for the district. Um, Ed, do you mind sending the link again? I think a lot of people are congratulating Ade in the um, chat box, which is great. We are very excited, um, but I wanna make sure that they have the link for the delegate vote. Thank you. So with that, um, we will go ahead and pause for a second, and then we will allow the votes to be tabulated. So our um, election for the district representative to serve on the Rotary International Council on Legislation um, is Pat Merriweather. So congratulations to Pat. I believe she is on the phone with us this morning. Um, and as our alternate, Pedro Savalias. 
So congratulations to Pat and Pedro. Thank you all. Thank you. Very exciting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. Um, thank you so much for the delegates who have voted. We really appreciate it. And again, congrats to um, Pat and Pedro as the alternate. I will now hand it over to um, Debbie, who has some uh, more awards before we vote on some additional items. So Debbie, take it away. Thank you very much, Connor. Um, and thank you so far, everyone, for your comments. Um, we will try to find more dignified music, um, Jane, for the next batch. Um, the outstanding service to the district, there are some additional folks we would like to recognize. And they are Hunter Byington from the Rotary Club of Naperville. Hunter is uh, now going to be referred to as Cecil B. DeMille Byington. Um, if you guys have seen the videos that we've put together, um, they've been a riot to do and so much fun. And um, Hunter, I can't thank you enough for, uh, for my close up so thank you for that. We're recognizing Teresa Sperling. Sometime last fall, we created something together called the Rotary Broadcast Center and tried to make these kinds of gatherings as much fun as they could possibly be, as well as being informative and educational and certainly meet our criteria. But um, Teresa also stepped up to the plate in a big way when the COVID hit and we had to come up with some broadcasting to keep our clubs meeting. So Teresa, thank you for your exceptional assistance. Um, I, I'm most appreciative. Melanie Jones from the Rotary Club of Orland Park. Poor Melanie uh, volunteered to be the event planner for this year. And to be the event planner for an event planner is difficult enough but to be the event planner in a COVID environment when everything you have planned and worked for vanishes overnight. Um, she performs exceptionally for us. It would have been a remarkable thing and perhaps someday somewhere we'll have a big bodacious celebration. So thank you, Melanie. Pedro, uh, Pedro Savalos was the district governor last year, as you know. And as district governor this year, I simply could not have done what I needed to do without his support. He paved the way for the openness that the district um, feels these days. The inclusion of new faces and new ideas, um, an accountability to the bottom line, looking for ways to save money and be more efficient and build relationships and bridges to communities otherwise not met. So Pedro, thank you very, very much for everything that you did this year. And then, you know, again, uh, we, we joke by calling her the voice of the virus, but where would we have been the last few months without the knowledge and experience of Pat Merriweather? She is truly a blessing to us. Our district is light years ahead of other districts in Rotary, simply because we had the information about this virus, we knew where the need was, we knew where the, uh, the help had to go, and she provided that direction. So to Pat Merriweather, we say thank you very much for your outstanding service. Um, so then we have a few more prizes to give away. And so Melanie, okay, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, now, Melanie, we have five more gift baskets, and I need you to give me five more numbers. First number is 61. Okay, number 61 is Mike Flores. Congratulations, Mike. It paid to wear the baseball cap. So would you like to pick prize number seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, or 11? We have a martini basket a Chicago snack basket, a wine tote, a White Sox basket, and a wine basket. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I'll go with the uh, wine basket, number 11. All right, number 11, that's a gift from the Rotary Club of Chicago O'Hare. 
So thank them and congratulations, Mike. Next number. Thank you, eight. Chicago O'Hare. 73. Number 73 is Rima, and I'm not even going to try to mention your last name, but from the Chicago Lithuanian Club. Congratulations. Yay. Which basket would you like? Oh, this is tough. By the way, you did say my last name correctly the first time you said it when you introduced me. Oh, so you wow. Okay. Right I, I was afraid time. to try it again, so thank you. <laughs> Okay. Um, I think, I think I will, I will do this for my husband. I'm going to go with martini time. He loves martinis. So I will take number seven. Number seven. So, so far we've given away seven and 11. Congratulations. Thank Next you. number, please. 88. Number 88 is Alita Williams <clears throat> from Rotary One. Alita, what basket would you like? Oh, um, <laughs> Seven and eleven are gone. Yeah, I was eyeing, I was eyeing number seven, but um, I'll take number ten. Number ten is the White Sox basket. <clears throat> Has lots of uh, trinkets from the White Sox, along with one hundred and eighty-five dollars in White Sox cash. So that's a, a gift from me and the Chicago White Sox. So thank congratulations, you, Alita. Number ten. Next number, please. 97. Number 97 is Michelle Baylog. I think she's from Naperville. Joliet. No, she's from Joliet. Joliet. Congratulations, Michelle. We have basket number eight, nine left to choose from. Um, I'll take number eight. Number eight is a, a gift from the Rotary Club of Chicago, and it's a Chicago snack basket. Number eight. Congratulations. Thank and last, last number. 105. All right, number 105 is Cappy Lau. I believe she's from Chicago Cosmo. Yes, hello, Debbie. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, and you're going to be the recipient, uh, seven, you're going to get number nine which is the wine tote from the Rotary Club of Chicago O'Hare. Fantastic. Thank you, Chicago Club from O'Hare. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who put these together. There were lot, there would have been potentially more had we actually gotten to the BBC, but these were folks that had put them together, had offered them to us, and were kind enough to make them available today. So thank you very much. And then winners, Melanie will connect you with who is in possession of these baskets and then help you make arrangements to pick them up or get them to you, okay? So again, congratulations to all 11 of our winners. Uh, Connor, we have another election. Yes, thank you so much, um, Debbie. Um, again, this is a delegate only vote. Um, please vote for one candidate. Um, it's election for the district representative to serve on the zone nominating committee for Rotary International Director. Um, so for the, those of you who don't or are not aware, each district sends a representative to the committee um, at the zone level and then the zone basically puts forth their Rotary International Director rep uh, recommendation to the Rotary International Board of Directors. So the candidates in front of us um, today for selection um, for the district representative for 6450 are PDG Pedro, PDG Ose, and PDG Scott. Again, as a delegate, please only vote for one of these candidates. The candidate receiving the greatest number of votes will be the district's representative, and the candidate with the next highest number of votes will be the alternate. Ed has again chatted the link in the box. You can also privately message it to me or um, vote verbally on the um, Zoom call this morning. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to raise your hand or ask it in the Zoom chat group. Um, otherwise, we will go ahead and give everyone a minute or two to go ahead and make your selection. Thank you again. So our um, representative to serve on the zone nominating committee um, is going to be Osei, uh, Pastor Sick Governor Osei David Andrews Hutchinson. And our alternate will be um, PDG Pedro Ceballos. So thank you everyone for voting. All right, thank you very much for that. And now um, we're thank gonna you. move on to Brett Mitchell and hear a financial report. 
Thank you, Brett. Thanks, Debbie. Uh, I want to start first by going back to last year. Uh, we want to go through and talk about the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2019, which of course is the rotary year 2018 through 2019. Uh, at the end of that year, we ended with a surplus of $5,837 compared to the prior year surplus of 6848. Um, also at the end of fiscal year 2018-2019, we had over $250,000 of cash on hand and prepaid deposits of an additional 31774 So at the end of last year, we were looking at good annual surpluses that provided a very positive cash flow. Um, I think that information was in your packet, but I just wanted to highlight that. For this year, which is the current fiscal year 2019-2020, um, as all of you know, I believe the district provided a rebate for the club dues to the district um, after canceling the district conference. That was about $43,000. Uh, those refunds went back as a $25 per active member fee to the clubs uh, to try to offset some of the issues we've run into this year. Uh, we refunded all prepaid conference registration fees, provided emergency relief to clubs by reimbursing for remote meeting accounts with Zoom like we're doing today. Uh, unfortunately, this year, the Rotary White Sox game that was slated for July 31st has been canceled. So those funds obviously will stay within um, the district. As far as current cash on hand at this point, we're at 276502 and we have prepaid deposits of 12448 uh, We remain in very good shape as a district and we expect at the year end will be at about $1,000, give or take, of, of where we end up. Um, from where we're right now. Um, at this point, I think everyone can feel good that the district's been well managed by leadership and that um, we should be having a good year and I'm glad we were able to give that rebate back to the clubs. Any questions? All right, thank you, Brett. And again, thank you to the members of the finance team um, you know, we couldn't have done that rebate so quickly if the finance team didn't jump into action. Um, and we've also worked very hard all year uh, with the team to see that we do whatever we can do as inexpensively as possible. But certainly not having a district conference, not having spring training, not having travel expenses and things really amounted to some dollars. And it was great to be able to turn them back. So Brett, thank you for your work for the, as treasurer. This is his first year as treasurer. And please thank the members of your finance team. I will, thank you. All right, and now we're gonna look at our fiscal budget coming up and District Governor-elect Chuck Corrigan. The stage uh, is yours. Thank you, Debbie. I, uh, happy to present the budget for the coming fiscal year. I'm gonna share my screen at this time with the budget that was in the packet so that everybody can see it as we're going along. Um, the income side of things, uh, we are keeping the due structure as we did this current year with the four tiers uh, based on the size of the club. Our per capita dues make up roughly half of the total income uh, on an annual basis. We also have fees for district conference for folks who register um, uh, either for the whole weekend or uh, for particular uh, parts of the weekend. Uh, we do intend to have a, a less expensive uh, registration format for next year. Uh, right now, everything is a little bit up in the air. Uh, I'm not quite able to confirm uh, arrangements because of the COVID situation, but I expect in the next uh, month or so that uh, I'll be able to finalize pricing and start publicizing that. Or uh, uh, Rotary International gives us an allowance for a district governor that actually went up a little bit, a few dollars from the last year. Uh, youth services uh, includes RILA, um, Youth Exchange, which is the inbound and outbound fees and some other events. Um, uh, those fees are intended to balance out the expenses for all of those events. Whether or not we have the Youth Exchange next year is an open question, uh, but uh, if, it, uh, if it doesn't go ahead, uh, the income and the uh, uh, expense sides of things will uh, cancel each other out. Uh, our Rotary Foundation uh, district grant expected to be about $80,000 this year. Again, all those monies are spent, uh, so whatever comes in there goes out. 
uh, the same with the uh, you know, foundation dinner. If Rachel holds another one this year, uh, we have a budgeted income for that. It pays for itself. Uh, last year, I think we made a slight profit of 100 or $200, something like that. Uh, the White Sox game is uh, was on the agenda to uh, for Jul the end of July, but as uh, Brett mentioned, that's canceled. So we will not have that income, but we also will not have the expense associated with that. Uh, and then we're, we have some interest coming in and fees for things like holiday parties. So that's the in kind, uh, income side of things. Uh, any questions on the income side? I can entertain those now. If not, I'll move ahead. I, I don't have the, uh, since I'm sharing my screen, I don't see any uh, chat questions. So if somebody sees that, they can- No chat questions. No chat, no okay. chat questions, yeah. On the income side, of, on the expense side of things, we have uh, expenses for district, all the officers, the governor, uh, the governor chain. Uh, we have expenses for us to go to uh, the international convention for our club visits district conference, uh, youth exchange events, et cetera. Uh, this year we didn't spend our uh, budget on, comp on the convention. Uh, we rebated it back. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, have a convention next year. Um, you can see the governor elect has the same. Uh, the nominee uh, has expenses for pets, conference and uh, club visits and other travel, as does the designee uh, who would be the person following Ade. Uh, we have uh, small budgets for expenses for our other officers, uh, the CAO, a PDG, um, Secretary and Treasurer. Uh, the governors, we have uh, expenses for them to meet. If we can meet in person, we will do that. If not, those will be savings. Uh, we do will pay for them to go to district conference and we give uh, them a stipend for their uh, club travel uh, based on the number of clubs that they have. and we have paid for their registration at uh, PETS, which is uh, in March of next year. Uh, board meetings, we do have money uh, budgeted for in-person board meetings. I expect that we will do a number of them uh, by Zoom, and so we'll probably have a savings here, but we do have that money budgeted. Um, likewise, with Club President Rounds Table, we have monies budgeted for that. We do hope that we can have start having in-person meetings at some point during the coming year, and uh, so we wanna keep those uh, funds budgeted, but uh, as we did this year, if, if we don't spend the money, we will find a way to use it properly, either on programming that benefits everyone or uh, rebating it back to the clubs. Uh, training is important. We have uh, district training and then training for our district leaders at zone. We have quite a bit of money in the zone, in the zone training budgets this year. And we have learned since this was put together that those in-person meetings will not be held. Uh, and it'll be a virtual meeting. So there'll be actually quite a bit of money in the zone training budget that will be available for uh, uh, either returning to the clubs or uh, supporting other program that helps everybody. Uh, that'll be up to the district uh, board to decide. Uh, President-elect training, we do expect to go forward. We have a budget for that, similar to the past. Public image committee, uh, club Express is the uh, platform that we use for all the district and uh, club web pages. That's an annual expense or paid on a monthly basis, but uh, the district picks that up. Uh, for foundation, again, we uh, if we have a dinner that's on a break even basis, we have other expenses for that committee, for the nominating committee and our other smaller uh, committees that don't meet very frequently. Um, we do have hey, Chuck, this is Connor. Um, yes, there's Connor. a question about the AG stipend. Um, someone believes, um, I think it was, you mentioned $50? Yes, per club. Someone asked, um, they believe it's 75. The budget for this year will be $50 per club, but we're also picking up a little additional expense on the, uh, the pets. So it, it just kind of shifted from, from the uh, stipend to the uh, uh, expenses for pets. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have an uh, administrator fee. That's our new uh, contract with uh, CAM for the coming year. Uh, they have uh, expenses that they would also be reimbursed. Um, we have our 
district holiday party and other uh, projects or events that we have. Uh, again, the White Sox game will not go forward. We had uh, in the past uh, made a slight profit at which we donated to Polio Plus um, with savings from other items that may not happen this year. We can probably still uh, decide to support Polio Plus from a donation from the district, but that's yet to be determined. Uh, John, excuse yes. me. Wendy is asking a question. Uh, she says, noticed pets was Saturday only, used to for be the, the entire AGs. weekend. For the AGs. There's a one day registration fee for the AGs and that's what uh, we'll, the district is will pay for. Thank you, Wendy. They're welcome to be there for the whole weekend, but that'll, that'll be what uh, the district picks up for that. So there's programming for that day. AGs. Uh, district conference expenses are uh, in line or slightly less than uh, the last couple of years. Uh, youth services expenses again is balanced out by the income and committee uh, if they can uh, still do RILA, if they can still do uh, exchange then those funds will go as shown but uh, if not then they won't collect the income on the income side of things so we'll be okay there. Uh, district grants of the eighty thousand uh, dollars, we'll probably spend seventy-eight to or thousand or more on directly on grants. We are allowed to take some as administrative expense. I expect we will not need to uh, do that because of savings in other areas. And then we do have an annual support of the Paul Harris Home and the Paul Harris Memorial that our district does, and we do build in a slight thousand uh, dollar and change uh, contingency for. Uh, unexpected expenses. And we learned this year that unexpected expenses do happen. <laughs> Sorry, I had a chuckle about that. Yeah. So that was it in a nutshell. I know I went through this uh, uh, with the presidents a couple of weeks ago on the uh, Saturdays, uh, but I'm welcome, uh, welcome any other questions that anyone might have. Um, and if no, there are no questions in the chat box at the moment. All right, then maybe Shelby, you can put the poll up. This would be a vote that uh, everybody in the room, whether you're a delegate or not, may uh, vote on. And we'll do a Zoom poll to uh, uh, approve the proposed budget. So much for voting. Um, with 95 folks, we will go ahead and approve the proposed budget for, di for the district for this next rotary year, 2020-2021. Thanks everyone, appreciate Thank your you. input. Thank you, Chuck, and thank you to um, all that played a part in putting that together. Um, exceptional. All right, so now we want to talk about the Rotary Foundation, and I've asked um, our District Rotary Foundation Chair, Rachel Osira, to give us a little presentation. Um, I think we all need to give great credit to her and her team. Um, we were able to put together a $33,000 uh, COVID grant and we got in, we didn't make the first round, but we got in the second round and that put $1,000 in the hands of 33 clubs. And that was extraordinary and required a great deal of effort on her part in that of her team. So Rachel, thank you and fill sure. us in on what's happening. Okay, well, well thank you, Debbie. And, and thank you everyone. Um, just a, a brief uh, presentation here on the Rotary Foundation at, at work in our district 6450. You know, as we know, the Rotary Foundation is, is our foundation. It's our foundation for doing good in the world. So we're just going to take a couple moments here um, this morning to show how our district funds that we've received back from the Rotary Foundation, uh, from the, the donations you all made to the annual fund um, three years previously, uh, were spent um, by the district. And our goal always is to engage as many clubs and as many Rotarians as possible in the activities. So, you know, there's, there's, there's different programs and, and throughout those programs, you know, our committees, our um, uh, district grant subcommittee, which is led by Pedro Savalas and our district foundation committee, that, that's our goal. So, um, there's uh, the, our global grants, which are the big grants. Those are the $30,000 plus budgeted grants. We spent uh, $68,400 of district designated funds uh, on those grants this year. Now, 
those produced a budget. So the total budget of those grants was over $1.5 million. So that's the Rotary Foundation at work. That's the matching from the World Fund. It's the club cash you're putting in. So with $68,000 of our funds, we get $1.5 million of, of projects. There were nine clubs uh, that participated as sponsor clubs, either the international sponsor or the host sponsor. Again, these were grants that were approved or submitted this Rotary year. And 11 projects were funded uh, in Chicago, India, Guatemala, Bolivia, Mexico, Honduras, Romania, Croatia, and the United Kingdom. So all over the world. And the photo you see, I always like to have photos um, from, from us, you know, from what we do. This is a photo from a project uh, called um, Bridging the Digital Divide. Uh, and this was put together by Oak Park River Forest. This is um, working with Kids Express in the Austin community. So um, congratulations to, to them. This is a project that's um, focused on peer mentoring and providing the, the um, the opportunity for kids in, in that neighborhood and that area to um, learn digital skills and many other things. So if we go over to um, district grants, we had about $41,000 of district funds provided. Now these are the short-term one-year projects um, that uh, you know, clubs have an opportunity to participate in if they gave to the annual fund three years prior. We had 34 clubs participate in doing um, district grants this, this current year. So um, wonderful projects, 46 wonderful projects funded. I love photos. Everybody knows I love photos and love to show the photos. I could only show one today, but this was from the Chicago um, Heights Park Forest Club. This was their third grade dictionary project. So um, next slide. Yep. And uh, then we go to Polio Plus. Now, we um, allow, so, so for district grants, um, clubs can choose instead to have their allocation go to Polio Plus and they match it with donations from the club. So um, we have about $9,000 that went to Polio Plus from district funds, which was matched 100% by the World Fund, two to one by the Gates Foundation. It's turning into $54,000 going to Polio Plus. We had 11 clubs participate in those activities. So, so thank you for that. And, and that, that program, um, you know, right now with COVID-19 um, really front and center uh, as it should be, we still have to remember, you know, we need to keep our, our, our polio efforts going for sure. And then Debbie already mentioned the, the disaster response. Um, we did make a donation from our district funds of $5,000 to the disaster response fund. We applied for and in the second round of funding um, got a $25,000 disaster response grant plus we had $6,000 of matching funds provided um, elsewhere and $2,000 from this year's district grant so we had uh, we, we did have 33 um, clubs participate it says 30 here but I counted two on the other slide and we had um, 31 projects funded so clubs received $1,000 to clubs, clubs who applied receive $1,000 to immediately put into the community. And again, such a wonderful effort. Thank you all for your participation, for your, um, just, just the, um, you know, the, the outreach um, that you all made in your communities. There's one picture here, and this is the um, Chicago, Chicago Little Village uh, Club. They are, uh, they reached out to a couple of food pantries uh, in, in their community, and they are, still are. They're, they're still working uh, with the food pantries uh, as well. So um, that's, uh, you know, that, those are your district uh, funds from the Rotary Foundation at work. And I hope that gives you a little bit of a window into how much impact um, you all have had. Thank you so much, Rachel. And thank you for everything that your committee has done this year. It's been an exceptional opportunity to show Rotary at its best. And you guys have helped us rise to the occasion. So thank you. My pleasure. So now we're back to giving out some awards. Um, we uh, recognize some of the clubs of the year. Um, and this year there were four of them. We recognize the Rotary Club of Chicago Cosmopolitan, Sam Owens and her team. Uh, much congratulations. 
They certainly, just as the Rotary Club of Chicago Lakeview um, with uh, Amy Hopkins, they represent the diversity, the youth, the crazy fun programs. They're always thinking outside of the box. Um, never has this been more important than this year. And what they do is extraordinary um, and we thank them for it. Um, the Rotary Club of Hinsdale has been recognized. They adapted to the Zoom technology in ways that you could not possibly begin to imagine. They certainly set a standard for the rest of our clubs to follow. They've welcomed 10 new members to their club this year. Um, they, they're just doing exceptional work in their communities. So to Tom Norton and his team, much congratulations. And finally, to the Rotary Club of Maywood Proviso, they are always stepping up and looking at their community and how best to serve and educating us in the process. They've also, they embraced Zoom technology years ago and we're um, very important in introducing it to our district as well. So we thank you for the work you've done and salute these four clubs as our clubs of the year. And then the club presidents of the year, we realize that it takes a leader um, to move a club. And this year we're recognizing Linda Kemp from the Rotary Club of Aurora as one of our presidents of the year. Linda put herself on the line and, and made some wonderful changes. They had a great growth in membership. They did wonderful things in their community with their a festival of lights. They have brought their um, village leadership into their club. She's done an exceptional job of leading Aurora into the 21st century, and we thank her for that. And then again, Tom Norton from the Rotary Club of Hinsdale. Again, Tom said to me that he wasn't sure how his club was going to embrace Zoom, but they exceeded his expectations and ours, and they've done a wonderful job leading us into this new um, environment. So congratulations to both Linda Kemp and Tom Norton as club presidents of the year. And so now we're gonna go back to district governor Chuck Corrigan. Um, we have some uh, language changes and some messaging changes to our bylaws. So Chuck, please take us there. Uh, thank you, uh, Debbie. Uh, again, I get to uh, share my screen and I will. Uh, we're going to go through the bylaws that are uh, the, uh, the changes that are proposed for the bylaws uh, quickly. We did circulate this uh, um, with the initial notice of the uh, meeting. We've gone over uh, this uh, again at the president's um, get togethers a couple of weeks ago. Um, and uh, it's been reviewed by the by the board and uh, what we have in front of you is the recommendations for the bylaws changes uh, from the board and, and from the bylaws committee of the board. Um, the first uh, change is in 10202, a uh, small one um, to in include the language that, uh, that among the objectives are district wide activities that include the district conference as well as other things. Uh, the next section we add uh, District 6450 as to clarify. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, but if uh, people have questions, please uh, let those who are monitoring the chat know, and they will uh, they will let, let us know. Uh, billing, uh, we, the, there's no change in the timing of the billing, but uh, the language of this has changed to reflect that uh, um, Rotary's billing practices to the district and to the clubs has changed a little bit with an invoice rather than a semi-annual uh, uh, billing statement that they used to use. Uh, the annual meeting like uh, we're doing today can be separate from the district conference and we're re-eliminating the language that reflects that it's normally held during the district conference to give us more flexibility in the future. We're increasing the amount of notice a little bit from 30 to 45 days uh, to give everybody a chance to review the, anything that comes up at the agenda. Uh, for the annual meeting, we are suggesting that a quorum be 50% uh, for the annual meeting. It had been as low as 20% uh, if it was part of the district conference and a third if it was independent of that. And the board felt that uh, we would want to encourage as much representation from the clubs as possible. Uh, the 36 or seven clubs today were in excess of that 50% mark. So it's, it's proven to be doable. 
Uh, the board is concerned, currently consists of 11 uh, members. Uh, we've uh, suggested that be up to 12 so, so we can add uh, one more person and uh, add some other representation throughout the district. Uh, currently, when someone becomes the district governor nominee designate and they're not a board member, we have been adding them to the board in February and uh, that uh, temporarily increases the number of members of the board in this provision, uh, confirms that uh, practice and allows it specifically in the bylaws. Uh, again, we're increasing the size of the board by one, so we uh, now have six at-large members if this is approved. Can you answer uh, my chat question? I, again, I, if somebody sees a chat question. Are, yeah. Is this Marcia? Marcia, yes. Yes, Marcia, this year, um, we and, and for the last three years, we have had five to seven candidates applying for positions on the board, and in some cases have only had one opportunity. Marcia's question was, you know, why do we want to increase the board when we might be having um, a lower membership and less participation? We've had a greater participation of people wanting to be on the board. And so we're looking to expand ourselves to cover as much territory as we possibly can. Also, the, uh, the board positions, uh, half of them or more are set by their officer positions. So the DG line, treasurer, secretary, and so there's only currently a few outside at-large uh, members and we wanted to get uh, more voices on the board. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, for the uh, board meetings, we adjusted the quorum uh, simply to 50% to be consistent with what we're doing at the annual meeting. Um, we wanted to clarify that we can take votes at uh, board meetings without uh, being there in person, that we can have it by remote communication, such as a Zoom meeting. Uh, again, we're trying to modernize a little bit. In 401 and 402, we just wanted to clarify uh, that the uh, district governor and the DGE and DGN are voting members of the district committees that they uh, are part of because of their position. Um, 403, this was just a correction of a, an error. They uh, uh, When they originally drafted it, they repeated the nominee uh, twice. So it, uh, you become the district governor nominee after you become a designate. Uh, currently, the bond for our CAO and our treasurer is set by the district governor. Uh, we revise that so that it's set by the board uh, as a policy decision. Uh, the major change that uh, we have, uh, and this is uh, actually revised at the last board meeting and updated in the packet, um, is to the chief administrative officer and uh, district administrator positions. The provisions that we have set forth now in revised 406, 102, 03, and 04 are to clarify the roles of the chief administrative officer, which is an officer position within the district, and the district administrator, which would be somebody hired um, to provide administrative and other services to the district. Um, we have spelled out uh, in these sections the various responsibilities a CAO would be someone who would be appointed um, for a term of three years, could be renewed after that. This would be a person who has got uh, experience and knowledge of how the district and the clubs work and would be there uh, for a number of years to provide guidance to the board and to the clubs. The district administrator, on the other hand, would be somebody who uh, um, not necessarily uh, experienced with Rotary, but uh, experience with providing uh, administrative services website management, uh, uh, that sort of thing, helping out with our finances. Uh, so we've revised that section pretty extensively, uh, went through a, a number of drafts, and what you see uh, now is uh, uh, the current recommendation of the board. And we did go through a long process of many months uh, reviewing the whole situation, and this is the collective wisdom of uh, your representatives going forward. Uh, for the nomination on council and legislation, uh, we shortened the time that uh, nominations could be uh, sent before the annual meeting uh, to give people a little more time to uh, consider that position. That's not going to come up again now for a number of years. 
because uh, we just elected someone for a three-year term, which doesn't start quite yet. Uh, for district committees, we added that there is a youth service committee that uh, regularly is, is part of it. It's a standing committee that meets every year, has a lot of work to do. Um, uh, appointment uh, of chairpersons, we changed the reference from district conference to annual meeting as kind of the business uh, meeting of the year. Uh, most of these chairs, we uh, do recommend a three-year term, um, although the district governor from year to year can always uh, decide to make a change. A quorum for uh, committees is only a third as opposed to 50% because at committee level, we don't always get as big of a turnout as we do on uh, uh, more of a wider basis. And we want those committees to be able to act. The audit committee, we've uh, retitled the financial review committee because they're not performing a technical audit. They are reviewing the uh, district records every year. And we clarified some language in there about uh, service on that committee as well as service on other committees. Um, and when you're serving on the financial review committee with these changes, you'll be able to serve on other committees once your work on that committee is done. Uh, the different district conference committee, we eliminated a lot of the detail that was in the bylaws we, re, we have left the purpose and uh, of the, what the district conference committee is, but since how things are handled at committee level varies from year to year, uh, we, we eliminate some of those uh, details to make it easier to uh, operate. Uh, is there any questions? I saw a few uh, chat things go up, but I don't. I think we've handled, uh, there were just a few little questions we answered and everyone seems fine. Okay. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Yeah. All right. Uh, for the finance committee, we clarified their duties rather than just leaving it open-ended that they'll do whatever the governor asked them to do from time to time. We've uh, put in there that they actually do review the monthly uh, financial reports and help the treasurer, uh, which is what they've been doing. <clears throat> for the nominating committee for district governor, uh, we have uh, proposed that that committee again be increased uh, for more representation from uh, around the district and we put in some language uh, relative to uh, um, when uh, someone may or may not participate depending on whether somebody from their club, family member, etc. Uh, could be a candidate. So we've increased the number of uh, members as well as the number of uh, potential alternates And uh, we've clarified the ballot by mail to mean that mail can be uh, postal or electronic mail. And then we've eliminated uh, section uh, article 10, which was in the original bylaws uh, before the district uh, was incorporated, uh, didn't have bylaws. And so there was a transition period and that is uh, long since no longer needed. So those are your proposed bylaws changes. If there are any other questions, we can entertain them now. If not, then we can allow everyone to again to vote on this resolution to approve the bylaws as presented uh, via the uh, Zoom poll that uh, uh, Shelby can bring up. Chef yes. Mar Marcia Zerwanka had a question. Yes, Marcia. She says in 6.02, doesn't the financial review need to be completed before December 1st because the IRS date is November 15th, I believe. Well, uh, it's a good question, Marcia. The uh, uh, November 15th date, and uh, Dennis, maybe you can correct me, that's the date that the tax return has to be uh, filed. But uh, um, the financial review by the committee uh, does not necessarily be, need to be completed before the tax return is done. Dennis, you're still muted, but or Brett, if you're on, one of you can speak to that. That's correct. Okay. Dennis has uh, been on the uh, finance committee for a number of years, past chair, and uh, he's a tax guy, so he knows the answers to that. <clears throat> I believe Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> he has credibility in certain areas. And that's the <laughs> only question we're seeing in the chat box. We've got some voting happening already. In All right, well, uh, Shelby, maybe you could put up the, uh, the poll then and everybody can, uh, can finish vote. I'm going to stop sharing my screen.
So again, anyone can vote on this. It's not just the delegates. Anyone who's attending can vote. Okay, and we have um, uh, approved the proposed amendments to the district bylaws. So thanks for all of you who have voted. Thanks so much, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Um, thank you to the board of directors. Thank you to the bylaw committee. Um, and thank you to Chuck for spearheading that. Um, they've, they spent a lot of time really making certain that those bylaws reflect um, the messaging, the current messaging, the current systems and procedures. So really appreciate that. And according to the messaging I'm getting, um, everyone is very appreciative of it, of it as well. So thank you. All right, uh, Connor, a little bit more voting to do. Yeah, so good thank at this. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you, Debbie. Um, so again, we have a resolution in front of us this morning. Um, and the resolution, this would be a um, delegate only vote. And the resolution is to ratify the board of directors selection of the members of the district governor nominating committee for district governor for the year, Rotary year 2023, 2024. Um, so the idea is, is that you have a slate of candidates on the left and then the alternates are on the right. The alternates would basically step in if a candidate is not able to do so or one of the candidates for district governors is from a club that is represented from the committee. So the slate of candidates is Linda Kemp, um, Nani, Tom, Chris, Debbie, Mira, Mel, um, Debbie Ross and Pedro. And then the alternates are Rachel, Marshall, Stephen, Martha, Paul, and Ryan. And the goal here is not that you're in voting for any um, individual. It's basically to ratify the board of directors selection of all of these folks. So Ed, we'll go ahead and chat that link to you. Um, and the idea is, is that you'll ratify the selection. Um, okay, thank you so much. We now have the results and we um, have ratified the board of directors selection. Um, so congrats to all of the candidates who will help um, us with the decision of selecting our district governor for 2023-2024. So thank you all for your service. All right, we have a, a few more awards to present. And these I think um, this might be the most important, so I need the next screen. Thank you. Um, we have candidates for the Rotarian of the Year, and there were three this year. Rachel O'Sira from the Rotary Club of Naperville is, as you've heard, our District Rotary Foundation Chair. Rachel was not only president of one of the largest clubs in the district this year, but she also directed the activities of our foundation. Um, she rose to the occasion, directed us through this COVID environment, helped secure the $33,000 grant, um, has, and has done an exceptional job um, leading her club in the same environment. So much congratulations to Rachel. Marshall, Marshall Schmidt is the current president of the Rotary Club of Chicago. Marshall provided amazing insult and um, information and counsel to the, the board of directors. You know, at, at times when you do the work you have to do, it costs you. And Marshall gave of himself and his energies, his knowledge, his experience, and he's just done an exceptional job with both the Rotary Club of Chicago and in helping the district. So we thank Marshall. And finally, Stephen Smutney from the Rotary Club of Chicago Near South. The presentation you've seen in front of you, the happy hour presentations, the rotary broadcast presentations, everything we've done from the very first training we did in, in July and August to fall training, the Christmas party, um, Empower Leaders, he ran that this year. There was nothing that the district did that Stephen didn't play a role and exceed our expectations. 
Um, he's proven a leader in his club. He's been a leader in the district and an exceptional um, pool of talent for us to uh, use and abuse. So thank you, Stephen, for all that you've done and certainly for the work today. So congratulations to all. You will be hearing that there is a virtual convention. Ladies and gentlemen, this 2020 has been a year of firsts. Never in the history of Rotary have they not had a convention, and certainly they've never had one virtually. So if you go to the link that is uh, available to you on the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the programming that is planned. There is absolutely no cost nor a limit to who can participate. So that means that if you have Rotarians that want to be, you'd like to introduce your village or community leadership. Um, these are all people that you can invite. Bring your family to the, uh, to the convention. Um, so please feel comfortable in participating to whatever degree you like and check out the schedule at the link provided, and I am certain there will be more information coming up. Next. All right, we've got four, actually three more days that are important for us to remember before we turn all of this over to Chuck. The next, of course, are the dates for the Rotary International Convention, the 20th through the 26th. June 24th, we officially install the next district governor, Chuck Corrigan. And then on June 29th, the presidents that served from 2019 and 2020 will join me for an end of year wrap up party. So stay tuned for more information about that. And finally, a thank you. Um, we did this in less than two hours. We voted on referendums, uh, proposals, resolutions, whatever you wanna call them, but we voted in a way we've never done before, but never in such large numbers. So thank you very much for what time you've given us today to help us operate um, the district. This, remember, as I've told everyone in my club visits, I work for you, the district works for you. So thank you for ver very much for giving your Saturday morning in support of that. Um, so I look forward to seeing you um, on June 24th when we welcome Chuck Corrigan to the lead of governors. And thank you again for all your time, for your kind words. Please go out and have a really great Saturday, but please remember to be safe, wear your masks, and uh, do what you do best as Rotarians. So thanks everybody. Debbie, Debbie before people oh. sign off, I think Marshall had something he wanted to say about the uh, jobs fair and- uh, Oh, of course. Project. Thank you, sure. Go Marshall. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Um, I think, as many of you know, um, we have started an initiative, which we're now calling Rotarians Helping Rotarians. Uh, uh, one of our members approached us about the very severe impact the pandemic had on his life and kind of raised the question of what Rotary can do to help. So we've started an initiative to provide um, some job services and counseling and uh, a, a group uh, that's many of whom are on this call uh, have volunteered and we've had several meetings and anyone else who's interested in, um, in joining, you're certainly welcome. Uh, we're going to create a, a landing page on the district website that is going to serve as a hub for the services that we're going to provide. And uh, I just wanted to, to make the announcement that we're going to try to get that landing page on the district website by the end of next week. So thank you very much for the support uh, that everyone has shown for this. And we really want to try to find a way that um, Rotarians can help other Rotarians who have been affected by the pandemic. You know, we reached out as soon as the pandemic hit to help everyone in our community. Uh, we really need to start at home and, and help those Rotarians who have been affected. So thank you very much, Chuck. Marshall, we have a question. Someone wants to know, is this uh, applicable just to our district, District 6450? Well, um, the, no, the answer is no. The short answer is no. Um, actually, there are now several districts, including 6440, 
immediately to our north who are launching similar initiatives. Um, early on in the process, I spoke to Mark Maloney and John Huco at Rotary International, uh, and they've kind of put out the word for uh, clubs to start thinking about what they can do. So hopefully uh, this district will be a leader, but this will not be unique to the district. Um, something to keep in mind, Marshall, thank you so very much for, for bringing this to us and leading it. Um, whenever there's a great idea, uh, the district governors talk a lot. Uh, my team, my year's class of district governors meet on the third Sunday of every month, and we have for a couple of years now. And when, we, when Marshall brought this idea to us at the district, um, I shared it with the others. You know, this is, if you think about Paul Harris in 1905, networking and support of one another's business was the core of what he started. So for, for us to go back to our roots at a time when it's never been more important to be a good Rotarian just seems most appropriate. But this is going to give us an opportunity um, in our district, better than 85% of our membership is somehow tied to a small business. So if we can support business owners, folks that are looking for work, folks that are needing work, um, give people an opportunity to share those ideas and experiences, we can't go wrong. So this is probably getting us back to our very basic core mission. So thank you, thank you, Marshall. And already the support within our district and within district lead, our zone leadership has been remarkable. So I have a feeling this may set a new a new tone for Rotary Internet. It has been a privilege, a true privilege. And I have to say the last four months have been a riot, an absolute riot. So thank you.